I always uh, tell people in that, you know, bring that up. It's, it's like, how long ago was it since a band went into the studio and played in a room live to tape and right. record it that way? And, you know, are using 100% real instruments and real takes without any, you know, budging around and everything. Well, yeah, it was, you could probably date it back to the 70s. You no, know, no shit, we sound like that. <laughs> yeah. I guess, yeah, there's a certain similarity, you know, approach probably. I mean yeah but as far as influences go I mean there's pretty all over the all, place yeah eclectic really I mean for Sam Jake and I we kind of I mean my father had a pretty big collection of music and um, you know I was like vinyls cassettes all of that stuff CDs but it was um, he, he did, um, kind of inherited a lot of stuff from my my, my grandparents um, like we were listening to stuff like Sinatra or big bands or uh, even those strange instrumental albums from the 60s and, and so it, we're doing crazy exotic world music kind of stuff so we turned out of that but you know it was kind of Jake who's really the big you know rock and roll guy I and mean, that's that's where he was coming from so so that's that's where kind of like Zeppelin or Jethro Tall, Hendrix, Hendrix you know. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but a lot of blues stuff, a lot of really roots blues stuff, you know, like um, Holland Wolf or Willie Dixon and, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, and then some some roots folk stuff, and even you know some seventies folk stuff with Jimmy Mitchell would kind of fall into that category. There goes the tequila train. There's a tequila train. Yeah. And, uh, I've seen that. This is where every time the train goes by, you have to drink a shot of tequila, right? Right. Yeah, that's the thing. Over here, we're out of here. Yeah. So I mean, like, yeah. So yeah, it's kind of really a mix of stuff. We're listening to a lot of songs. What you don't know is uh, is Josh. Uh, there's no train. He's just swearing a lot. Yeah, and that's just what I have to push to mute the swearing. It's good. I, I caught on fine, kind of midway. It just went into a whole mess of pain over here. Is this like your house that you're at right now with that train? No, this is the no. management office. I don't know what the hell they. Okay, it's like the Blues Brothers. You'll never get any sleep because <laughs> you sleep right by the train track. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel, you kind of no, yeah. He, I, my father brought me up on a lot of rock and roll and he actually brought me up on kind of everything um like steely dan mm. you know jazz a lot of more prog and uh rush and you know that whole scene but interestingly enough my mom actually brought me up on uh like peter paul and mary and simon and garfunkel and you know that whole sort of folk scene um john you know, denver john denver <laughs> i can't believe i left him out probably the single biggest artist I listened to growing up my mom really was all over the place and that and he inspired me to play guitar um which was my first instrument aside from drums and you know I kind of got me into the whole music scene mm. in a way was the guitar well kind of I don't know maybe we, you could call it like closet fans of John Denver but I remember Jake, Jake brought to the table something acoustic it was a demo he was just recording he's like what do you think of this I'm like I think it sounds exactly like a John Denver song so just to mock him, I decided to put the John Denver vocal on it and, and just sort of all the John Denver cliche lyric stuff. And uh, I called it Ode to Johnny, and it just turned into a big 